In our last wilderness meditation, we thought about the importance of making authentic contact with our environment, what we smell, hear, taste, touch, and see with our external environment, and what we feel and think in our internal environment. We stress the importance of remaining in the here and now present and how in making this authentic contact with our environment, we open up the opportunity for intentional volitional growth in our lives. None of us ask to be here. This is what we all share in common, our thrownness into this world into the society and the culture and that society and culture begins with our parents our first caregivers and moves on to our teachers and what the television set tells us and the internet and society as a whole takes on a certain naturalness because we don't remember ever learning it many of the things that we take for granted we captivate it in the acceptedness of just how things are are merely the result of learning and we are not only thrown into this world but fallen and our state of fallenness means that we don't know and we can't distinguish between what is presented to us and what is actual reality For example, we live in a society in which achievement and accomplishment seem to be the captivation and acceptedness. We just assume that progress and achievement and accomplishment are things that we should be proud of. And every time we brag about an accomplishment of our child, there is a negation, there's a consequence. And it suggests tacitly, or maybe not so tacitly, that they're being judged. And this is the child in me and the child in you. It's not us doing it to our children. It's the remembrance of this judgment in our own lives. And this is a belief that is a fiction. We don't have to accomplish. We don't have to achieve. We don't have to impress others to be worthwhile. Quite literally, waking up each morning and being present with others is the bar for success. And deep down inside, we each know this. We feel it. But society has told us not to listen to that. If you're going to do something, there has to be a reason to do it. There has to be a payoff. So when we're in school, we don't study the material to learn and appreciate it. We try to achieve a high grade. And when we go to work, we aren't looking to do something that necessarily fulfills us or helps others, but what brings the most prestigious paycheck. So rather than using others' jealousy and admiration of us to judge our self-worth. We want to reintegrate those alienated parts of ourselves that were naturally there. The joy of doing something for the sake of doing something. Painting for the sake of painting. Making music for the sake of making music. Taking a walk in the woods simply for the sake of taking the walk in the woods and being with ourselves. If the research shows there are health benefits That's fine, but we're not here for the health benefits. We're here to be with ourselves. So we have no agenda to get anywhere. We're just here being and allowing aspects of our psyche, long buried, long forgotten, eternal truths. And this is our path towards wholeness, completeness learning how to listen to the wisdom that's within us and the wisdom of nature 
I'm turning off all the messages from society, all the shoulds, all those messages telling us what we need to be to be worthwhile. And as we come into contact with this, this aspect of ourselves that we've neglected, we understand that through this awareness we become whole again. And nature helps us to hear that voice within us because it is a part of nature. But we have to be careful not to fetishize nature, not to get wrapped up in nature as being something beyond us because nature is part of us and we are part of nature. And this is our entrance into a willful, meaningful, creative existence.